Hi, everyone. It's Josh here with Vancouver Real Estate Today. This morning, I've got my good friend, Amanda Fernandez, associate at Narrative Financial Services, to come and talk to us about some of the services she offers and some of the insurance policies, things like this that can really protect your family and yourself and your assets and potentially help you build up towards buying real estate. So here's the thing. Homeowners, homebuyers, investors, we all want to find that perfect property to move into and to eventually sell for profit. And we want to make that purchase in a place with affordable, safe, quality homes, communities, and businesses. Why? So we can actually enjoy our lives, take vacations, and spend the quality time we want with the people we love. How do we do all this without risking a fortune and running ourselves ragged? That's the big question, and this show is dedicated to the answer. I'm an associate with uh, Narrative Financial Services. We are a holistic um, planning company. Um, we're based out of downtown Vancouver. Um, we have been in our offices now for 10 years, I believe, at this location. Um, I've personally been working with the team now for four years and combined, I believe we've hit like 25 years experience between all of us, um, which is great and it's continuing to grow. Fantastic. And how did you get into this industry? Like what, 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 what was the road that brought you, brought you into it? Um, I love that question because it's a really great story, actually. Um, I was in the food and beverage industry for 15 years, and um, the bartender that I was working with, her boyfriend worked for Sun Life, and he actually hired me um, based on like what I was doing with the keg at the time. Um, he thought I'd be a really good fit for this role. Mm. And so I decided to pursue that and, and follow that. And here I am today and I love every minute of it. Fantastic. What do you love about it? Tell me about this, uh, this business and, and really your profession. Because when people talk to me and go, you're a realtor, they, they, it's pretty easy to understand what that is. But I think yeah. someone like yourself, financial services is very like vague and hard to understand for, for some people. Yeah. So, um, well, I guess essentially every single one of our team members brings something different um, to the table. Mm. I personally, my passion is life insurance and health insurance. And so I try to focus on those two areas of my business. Um, uh, there are a lot of assumptions out there that we all just, you know, push RSPs and push life insurance, but there's the whole planning and the whole background story to that. Um, a lot of our clients we work with holistically and planning with them instead of being, we don't, we don't consider any of our clients customers. They are clients because we're constantly working with them and building on plans and creating their future with them. Okay. So what does like a uh ongoing relationship look like in the in the life insurance world with somebody like I, I, I go with the policy that we decide is right for me mm -hmm. and why do I need to be in touch ever again or, or like what, what does that look like yeah so a lot of people do come in um, into this industry because they've just bought a house and they need insurance to cover their mortgage and mm. so we work with a lot of our clients building these plans. It's not just a one-stop shop. Um, we work with them annually. We do annual reviews. Um, we're constantly being in touch with them, whether that be on their birthdays or just to say, hey, how's it going? Um, just to check in. Yeah. And so a lot of the entry um, products or plans are, it does come in the form of life insurance, but to build upon that, um, we usually introduce critical illness insurance to basically protect everything um, that you've built over your lifetime. So we've got mortgage uh, replacement insurance, I know is one that you mentioned, which is different yeah. than mortgage insurance, and you've got critical illness insurance. Yeah. Are there other kinds that uh, that we also have, or are those the two main ones? Those are the two main ones um, that we do focus on. Um, 
they're the most important to me. Um, on a personal side of things, um, my mom unfortunately passed away from cancer. And mm. so in dealing with that process, it really, it really created um, something very special that came out of me um, to be able to speak with people about these things. It's kind of, it's very strange because not everybody wants to be talking about getting sick or dying. Mm. Like these aren't the most fun conversations to be having, but to know that we're creating these plans and putting these tools in place to protect these types of situations, it's, it's really, really important. Okay. So tell me a little bit about, um, about each of these and, and how, like, like why, why should I go for either one of them other than the general kind of, if I get sick, someone's going to help me. I, I'm going to have something to right. fall back on. And, and if I can't pay my mortgage, like what's the, break it down for me as someone who's not familiar, if you don't okay. mind. No, 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 not at all. So critical illness insurance, how we gauge it is that we base it around your salary. So we're protecting that because our biggest asset is our ability to work. And mm -hmm. when, when we don't work, unfortunately, you know, the bills still have to get paid, lights still have to be on, groceries still need to be bought. And so these plans create that cushion or that blanket to support, well, support you financially if something were to happen. So we usually base it on, like I was saying, salaries, um, anywhere from one to three times your salary usually is a good range. Mm -hmm. um, we tend to put people into plans that have the capability of having a savings in place. So as well as having that protection that should you get sick by cancer, stroke, heart attack, things along that line, um, you would be getting paid a lump sum of money to support your lifestyle because in those times of course we're not going to work we're going to concentrate on our health but like i was saying the bills still need to get paid rent still needs to be paid mortgage payments still need to be paid as well so that creates that safety net in order to well, still go on with your life and be able to take care of yourself in those trying times unfortunately and that's for something major like a terminal illness rather than the situation we're now in with the coronavirus, like you're not going to be accessing this if you come down with the coronavirus and are out of commission for a couple of weeks or if your job's been terminated, that's not applicable in this situation. Is that right? Yeah, there's, there's no insurance. Um, well, you could look into disability insurance would probably be your closest to that because if, if you can't work and you become disabled, then those things would kick in. Um, but we haven't seen anything that does cover this COVID. It's, it's, it, I think it's too risky and it's not, it's, it's not on a measurable scale right now. It's just, right. it's, it's so new and it's, it's, it's too fresh to even try to insure. Okay. I want to get into the mortgage replacement insurance, but one thing that uh, I've been, other people I've known, I've known and met uh, through, through work in similar industry to you, they always, they talk a lot about building up equity uh, mm -hmm. as, as we do, uh, when we're paying down a mortgage for a piece of property. So can you share with me a bit about how you build equity through life insurance? So essentially, you can't really build equity when it comes to life insurance. How it works is that you're covering a certain asset. You're covering a liability. So if something happens to you and you unfortunately pass away, this money can go to wherever it needs to go to with mortgage insurance. It's, it's a, it's basically, it's a cookie cutter plan because the banks get paid with life insurance, your loved ones get paid. So if you need to pay off the mortgage, if you need to pay off certain debts, um, mm. then you have the ability to use that money to do so. So my misunderstanding when this was a while ago, mind you, but someone had told me you can build up, this financial asset and pull money out of it maybe down the line to purchase a piece of property and you this can. is a way to yeah. this was a way to do savings kind of a smarter way 
Well, it's, it's not a smarter way. It's just in a different way. You can, it's, so what they're talking about is permanent insurance. Okay. So that, there is an investment component that's built into the policies, but you pay astronomically more money than you would for say a term 20. Um, so what that does is that, yes, you are building money in the policies, but even if you withdraw the money with some policies, they would collapse upon themselves. And because you're taking that cash out, you yeah. would have to claim it as income, depending okay. on the taxable gain. It's, it's, there's two types of products. Basically, to break it down simply with life insurance, there's term and there's permanent. So the permanent plans, yes, you, you can build a cash value within that. They are more expensive. The term policies are basically quick and simple and easy to understand. They're more, I don't, I don't want to say it's, it's an easier product, but it's, it's a more simple product that people can wrap their brains around and be able to understand it because we find that in our industry, we're not selling something that's tangible. Mm -hmm. So when you're purchasing it, you're basically, you're purchasing a promise, a promise right. that stuff will get paid and taken care of should you pass away. So yes and no, the answer is um, to building cash value, but it just, it depends on what your needs are and it depends on what your budget is for sure. So you're are you say advising against you going with a policy like that for a lot of people or no, no no um it just it really just depends on what you need it to do for you really because the insurance is gonna work for you its term is cheap and cheerful it's easy to cover off it's it's less expensive um than than purchasing uh, mortgage insurance but everyone's needs are different and one product is not suitable for one person or the other. It just, it really depends on what the situation is. So can we do, uh, can we play life insurance and real estate in a hypothetical <laughs> world for a second? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Awesome. So say I don't own a property right now. I'm renting in Vancouver. I've got a stable salary, which might be hard to come by in the current environment. We're in for a lot of people. If you have yeah. that, Congratulations, you should be, thank your lucky stars because a lot of people are, are out of work right now. For um, sure. But so I've got a stable job, stable income, and but I don't own a property and I need to build up some of an asset to do that. And I don't have parents who are going to help me out with the down payment yeah. for whatever reason. So what is the road to doing that? Is there a life insurance policy or road that I can build some of that cash value that you spoke of to later borrow and pay or like to either collapse the policy, take that money and put it into a mortgage for a property uh, or am I better off to put it in a savings account or some other kind of investment vehicle? You, well, you could do both. Um, but hypothetically speaking, based on um, the situation, honestly, I would recommend critical illness insurance because if something does happen to you and you've created a nest egg that you want to use to purchase your first home, then I would get this product because essentially how I would set it up is that we would cover off the liability of you possibly losing your salary because when we lose our salary, guess what's going to go first? We're going to dip into our savings. And so mm -hmm. we can create a savings component built within the critical illness insurance policy that allows you to receive the premium back in 15 years. Mm. So whatever money you've paid into this particular policy, either way you're covered. If you get sick, it'll pay out, you're covered. If you don't get sick, congratulations, that's fantastic. And at the 15 years, if you no longer need the insurance, then you can take those premiums back and use that money mm, to okay. towards, um, your down payment. So there's many ways about 
going about this. Um, like myself, for instance, um, I have a very small life insurance policy, but a very large critical illness insurance policy because being a single woman and independent and growing this business, um, it's definitely something that I need to protect myself. So me personally, in that situation, um, yeah, critical illness insurance for sure. Hands down. That's great. So at the end of the term, because I mean, you forgive me for being the, the real estate mind here. I'm thinking, mm -hmm. how do I buy the, the property? Mm -hmm. At the end of the term, I can take back that premium and put it towards purchasing something. Yep, for sure. Exactly. And what are the length of terms generally? Like how, how um, what's the range? Well, there's, um, there's term tens, which is 10 years. Okay. Um, and then term to age 75 and 100, which is a lifetime. So those are the three um, plans that the length of time that we do offer. Um, we, yeah, they, um, it's, it's, quite, it's quite interesting to design these plans with the savings in mind. Um, mm. I do find that having, I guess, because you want to have, you want to have a diverse portfolio, as they do say, um, and you never want to have your eggs in one basket. So I generally, with me, myself, um, I put the amount of money that I'm putting towards savings, say I have $100, okay? So I would put $75 into an RSP or a TFSA or whatever that looks like. Um, and then the other $25 I would put towards a critical illness insurance policy. So essentially you're still saving, you're still putting away, but with the critical illness insurance policy, you're protecting that savings. Hmm. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that's really helpful. Cause yeah, I, uh, I found when I end up talking to people who work in life insurance, I always get a lot of positive comments, but not a lot of substance. And, and then, so when I can hear you say, no, you got to hit to the end of the term before you can take that yeah. out. Uh, that 10 years is, is, a, is quite a, in my mind, it's a long time. It really isn't. But uh, if, if, <laughs> no. if you're trying to save up for a property and you're thinking 10 years down the road, in my mind, that's a real estate agent. I'm going, you know what, if we look back 10 years, the price has doubled. And so I wouldn't want to be thinking about that long term of a horizon to, to access those savings. Now, if it's in the context of diversifying a portfolio uh, and, and building up a, a different style of asset than a, than a real property one, that makes a lot of sense. So I yeah. appreciate you uh, kind of teasing that out and explaining it uh, to me. So maybe we'll shift gears a bit and then move into what's the difference between mortgage insurance and mortgage replacement insurance? Because I know anyone who's buying a fir their first home mm -hmm. uh, and goes and gets a loan from, from the bank is going to be offered that product is uh, yeah. mortgage insurance. I'm sure. For and I, sure. I'm pretty confident it's not something you want to buy. Um, well, it's, there's many different areas out there to get insurance. Um, the main differences between having pure life insurance and mortgage insurance, the bank is a beneficiary when it comes to mortgage insurance and your loved ones are the beneficiaries. Um, with mortgage insurance, you're paying for a depreciating amount that unfortunately as the years go by and you renew your mortgage, that insurance is just going to go up higher, but as your mortgage goes down. So it's kind of like this instead of like this. So as I'm paying down my mortgage and that loan's getting smaller, the premiums are staying the same or they're, insurance is going up. they're getting higher. So it doesn't yeah. really compute. They don't mm -hmm. exactly. So with life insurance, say your mortgage is 500,000 in a hypothetical speaking situation, um, then you can just take out five hundred thousand dollars worth of life insurance, and that that those premiums will never go up for the duration of that term or of that permanent policy. So that's the great story about these is that you can lock in those rates and that you never have to worry about them going up or down. Mm. And. Am I right to say that the mortgage insurance rather than the mortgage replacement insurance, mortgage insurance covers the lender, not the 
person who's owned the property. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So essentially the bank is paying the bank. Right. So you're paying for the bank to be protected essentially mm-hmm. exactly. rather than yourself. And if it was not, if it's the mortgage replacement insurance, then you've got some say on what happens with those funds. Should exactly. they, that policy get triggered? Yeah, exactly. You Meaning, know. you know, let's say I've got my, I'm married. I've got my wife here. I pass away. I've got mortgage replacement insurance and, and no longer and we need to access that somehow, or it's been triggered. Right. So if, then she can decide what to do with that money though, whether it's like. Exactly. Exactly. So basically you would state this in your will as to what would happen to those funds. And so you have full control of everything. And that's the beauty part of it is having mm. the control um, with mortgage insurance as well. It's, it's not a guaranteed product because what they do is it's called post underwriting. I've heard of this. Yeah. So when something happens, you say you pass away um, from smoking, you had a heart attack and unfortunately passed away. That's when they then go in and start asking the important questions of, did you smoke? Are you male? How yeah. what's your age? And so with life insurance, all of the underwriting gets done ahead of time. So most people in depends on the coverage um, and your age, you would do blood, urine and vitals. That's pretty standard. Um, it, it's a very quick and easy process. Um, we have a great team that comes out to your home or to your office, wherever you basically feel most comfortable to get these um, procedures completed. Mm. That everything gets done at, like in the very beginning. So there's no hiding from anything. They ask you if you smoke, um, if you've done drugs, if you, your height and your weight, things like that. So it's, it, it's, it, it's having mortgage insurance and having life insurance. It's, it's not one-sided. Both products still exist, but it just depends. Okay. One example I'd heard in the past was like, the most insignificant or inconsequential kind of thing might be written into a policy on a mortgage insurance where it's now invalidated or when it comes to that post underwriting, I think was the the term Mm -hmm. for it. So for some reason, yeah, now that policy is invalid and they just kind of say, here's all the premiums you paid us back, but sorry, we're not going to do any, any, thing for you otherwise so we're just giving you your money back that we've been holding and i would imagine probably without any interest yeah and unfortunately that's the downfall to having mortgage insurance like i was saying it's not a guaranteed product so unfortunately there are stories out there where families did not get paid and they Mm. had been paying for these premiums for years and so that's the scary part um, about that product is that it's, it's not guaranteed. And so you'd want to start off on the right foot and set yourself up um, correctly, I guess. Um, in other words, with life insurance, for sure. Is there an upside to just straight mortgage insurance that I'm not considering? Um, I don't think so. But... <laughs> That's fine to say. <laughs> Um, I've never heard any good stories about mortgage insurance. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> Nor have I. So well, I'll take that for what it is, and and maybe ask your friends if you if you don't believe us. Yeah. Well, people. honestly, having something is better than nothing. But yeah, yeah. for sure, you know, like it is what it is. Okay. Awesome. So, I don't know. Do you have any stories of? Can you share any horror stories or any like really good, any, any amazing stories people have that you have with clients or any terrible, like, oh, these people just really got the short end of the stick for, for whatever reason, or, or, or those kind of not things we, we should get into? Um, no, I'll share a story. Um, actually, so a big part of my job is my job actually really starts when a claim gets processed. 
Um, I recently had um, my first critical illness insurance policy, unfortunately, um, pay out um, to mm. a client that I had I had met with a few times. I had been to her office. Um, I had seen her at um, um, at Lucia in Cirque, um, and we had become quite quite comfortable with each other and really appreciated um, each other as businesswomen and um, working independently. And so unfortunately she called me a few weeks ago and she basically gave me the news that she has cancer. And so mm -hmm. that was when like, that's when I start to like, that's when my job really does start because I need to get her organized. I need to get the team organized and, to basically get her where she can feel comfortably financially um, right away. And so to bring that comfort to somebody, it's very, it's very humbling. Um, mm. It's, it's something that I never want to be able to use, but when I have to, it's, it's a big part of my job for sure. What would be, like, how does it work for someone like myself who doesn't have uh, a steady, uh, linear kind of income to to peg against? Like, what do you do for the self-employed independent contractor or the entrepreneur? Like, what options do, do they have? Because we don't have in, a... In what sense? Well, for if I want to buy some kind of life insurance product, whether it's critical illness, um, and you want to ma market against my salary, I mean... It's not, it's, it, it, it's not, um, I know where your brain's going and it's not set up like that. Um, they, they don't base it on when you get paid. It's based on like the fact that you are getting paid. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if you get paid once a year or twice a year or quarter. Right. I, I guess I'm thinking of more what, what my, I don't know. I hope no one from the CRA is watching this, but what my tax return shows, you know, because no, a lot of things has, can no. run through the Yeah, the no, 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 no. So if something happens to you, this money either goes to you personally yeah. as a lump sum tax-free. Yeah. And if something happens to you and you pass away, your loved ones would receive that money tax-free. And the, num the sum of that money is determined by how much I'm putting into it, not by anything else? It's based on your coverage amount that you've applied for. Okay. So it's all, it's coverage amount. It's not against. Yeah, the exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I think that's really enlightening, at least for me on, uh, on what you do and, and the kind of products and services and, and ways I can protect myself and build up a potential asset over a term to, with that eye of leveraging it towards property at a later date. Maybe tell me, I'd love to hear how you've been impacted by what's going on uh, in the world right now where, you know, you mentioned your office where you have been for 10 years, but obviously we're both working from home at the <laughs> yeah. moment. Yours looks a lot more homey than mine. I gotta say, I like it. Oh, thanks. Uh, coming to me from the West End on that end of the screen over here, we're in Yale Town. I know, so we're not far from each other at all. It's so <laughs> weird. We're like literally right there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So tell me how you've been impacted by the changes we're seeing over the, over the last four weeks. What's it been like for you? Um, it's been interesting to say the least. Um, we've had to evolve and adapt very, very quickly. Um, my last day in the office was March 16th. Hmm. Um, we came in and collectively as a team agreed that okay maybe it's time we should start working from home and then the next day Tuesday um, Trudeau came on and recommended everybody work from home if they can and self-isolate if they can so that started um, and then basically a lot of my job is meeting with clients face to face and so we had to very, very quickly as a company um, adapt and evolve and make changes. So you and I are on Zoom now. Yeah. Um, so Zoom has become a daily tool that I use to still continue and grow my business. Um, we've 
we're well, we're now able to do applications over Zoom. Um, we're mm. uh, yeah, which is great um, because if we couldn't complete applications, this would not be happening. Um, mm. So we've basically incorporated every single technological like tool we could have um laptops we would some people went from desktops to now laptops um using zoom um we found we've incorporated um more social media into our business um than ever before you and i were talking about instagram mm -hmm. um so that was basically approved last week which was great because i love instagram and i love using the platform um, but I was never able to incorporate my business into it. And so now finally I am. Um, now is so, that just for narrative or is that for all insurance brokers across Canada? Well, that's solely for Sun Life. I can't speak Sun on, Life, okay. Yeah, I can't speak on behalf of other insurance companies. But Sun Life um, wouldn't let people do that before and now they've said, okay, go for it. Exactly, yeah. So now um, we're on LinkedIn, um, Facebook, Instagram. So we're using those three main platforms. Why would they, why, why did they wait till now? Like it just seems like such a... Oh, yeah, I'm, like, not, I'm not too sure. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Um, but everything is changing daily, if not like hourly. We um, we get updated newsletters twice a day. Wow. Um, which is great. And it's it's constantly changing. And to be able to keep up with it, if, mm. if we weren't such a young team and a flexible team, yeah. I don't I don't think our business would survive because we literally had to like change our procedures overnight and yeah. it's coming at us left, right and center. Um, and we just had to keep up with it. But yes, yeah, I think you gotta be um, agile, especially those with agility and ability to pivot uh, yeah. is the kind of buzzword of this uh, season we're in. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I see a lot of realtors who are, burying their head in the sand and thinking, you know, this is all just like the end of the world and we're shut down and I can't do anything where, whereas I don't want to be one of these agents that goes, yeah. I've never been busier and everybody rolls their eyes, but it's been a, there, there's been some good come out of it because we can do yeah. more of these video calls, um, become more available to people and, and really just leverage some of the technology that we're blessed with in this, uh, in 2020 to to work and, and to serve our clients so i'm glad mm -hmm. that that's come into your uh, profession as well that's good to yeah hear. yeah we're um we're pretty pumped about it because we've been joking lately that we're so used to being like we're all human we want that human connection and so we've been joking around like when all this covid stuff ends we're going to be kicking and screaming going into the office because yeah. we want it to be home and so we create these daily routines and we rely upon them so heavily and then as soon as you you know somebody else throws you a curveball you kind of adapt to that and then another curveball and then you adapt to that so mm -hmm. it's been pretty interesting to say the least over the past 4 weeks for sure awesome Thanks for sharing. So tell me about some of the positive outcomes as a result from these adjustments you, you've made that you've seen in your business. Is there anything, yeah, what, what positive, I, I, I hear you're, you're able to get on Instagram now, which you're excited about. Anything mm -hmm. else? Um, well, to be honest with you, doing applications remotely, we've been asking for this for quite some time, but due to compliance reasons and legal reasons, mm -hmm. we were never really given that honor. And so now we have this ability to connect people so quickly um, and help with their needs and just get things taken care of because life still needs to go on in times like this and yeah. people still need help and they still want that advice and the guidance and to i just honestly i feel so grateful for what sun life has done as a company to support us 
mm-hmm. which is, it's great. It's a good feeling and I'm very, very happy and grateful to be still working and especially to be working for a Canadian company that's been around for over 150 years. Like this company has seen more than you and I combined <laughs> when it comes to like wars and famine yeah. and depressions and all of this stuff. So they are basically, they're built for this. They, they, they can see it, they expect it, but they plan for it. And mm. thank goodness they did because now we're able to use these technologies like you and I are today. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. So here's what I want to know then. What, what's different yeah. about narrative what, as a company other than that you're, we're, we've, we've kind of come up on that you're more agile and able to, maneuver in, in the whatever gets thrown at you but tell me some more tell me some more so there's four of us on the team um we have our leader uh brad um he's the founder of the company he's been an advisor now for over 16 years since 2004 mm. um he started out oddly enough as a teacher and um mm. then progressed into becoming an advisor and uh, we have Shireen. She's our newest associate. Um, she's basically me in a nutshell. Uh, she's great. She's phenomenal. Um, and we have Joey, who is our office support. Um, he's our go-to. He's our organizer. He's basically the point guard of the team. Mm. Um, and we all just bring different aspects to this business that we create. It's, I call it the hugged approach because it is a team effort and all of us are, are there for each other. Um, we're very supportive of each other because we all want to grow and flourish in this business. And so our level of service is like next to none. Um, we take care of every single person as if they're our own, you know, like they're our family. Um, We know things like what, like when they come in, uh, what, like how they take their coffee, if they prefer sparkling or still water. Um, It's just those attention to detail that we make because it's, it's important. Um, You Mm. have to step up the level of service when it comes to, um, the needs of your clients. It makes you stand out when you're authentic and you care about them genuinely. So, um, yeah, I don't know if that answers your question. No, that's but. <laughs> great. Yeah. I think that's something I hear a lot of my clients asking for when they say what's important in a realtor is honesty and authenticity. And I imagine the same for yeah. Your business. Well, yeah, because, you know, we're talking about real situations and really scary situations and really yeah. lovely situations all in one conversation. And if if you don't come off as being genuine or authentic, it's it, it's not a good feeling, especially when you're speaking about things so personally about mm-hmm. your finances, about your goals, about your wishes. Mm-hmm. And so you really, you, you really got to be loving this industry because it's, it's a wild and wacky industry and <laughs> it's not for everyone. Yeah. Um, but I love it. And I think, I think that comes across when I interact with my clients in that way, for sure. Definitely. Fantastic. And how do you grow this business that you're in? What's the, what's the model to, build out build out your portfolio or your clientele yeah so our main source um for sure is referrals um to get a referral from a client it's just Mm. it it means that much more because they know that you're going to properly take care of that person um that you'll be speaking with um we have a great leads program um as well that sun life does put on um, which is fantastic too. Um, but for sure, referrals and creating those relationships with our clients are the most important ones. Great. How about assumptions people make about the insurance industry, specifically <laughs> the life insurance industry? I know I've had them. Okay, the so, okay, so what are your assumptions? I just don't like paying money out of my pocket each month. That's always a cash flow thing for me as an agent. <laughs> I'm trying to streamline, keep those monthly expenses really low. Yeah. Um, 
So really anything that skims out of it uh, is not ideal. I, I see the value, but I often come up with the excuse of, um, well, you just don't understand what it's like to be in a commissions only business where you're anything you're having, some, you've got to have a little slush fund kind of available yeah, for times was, like today. <laughs> yeah, no why kidding. I am very comfortable in this environment because I'm going, I'm used to not getting paid every two weeks. I mean, it's not like, uh, it's not new. I'm used to working from home. So it yeah. was a much quicker adjustment for me to, you know, there was, I gotta say, when this all happened, I think it was like on a Tuesday or Wednesday, they started announcing things. And on the Thursday or Friday, I started to feel some anxiety. And then by the time Sunday hit, I was, I was okay. Um, I would say the biggest assumptions are probably the fact that insurance is tough to get and that it's too expensive. Mm. Yeah. Well, I know it's not that expensive. And then some, I always do like 20 bucks a month kind of thing. It's pretty or, cheap. Yeah. Depending yeah. on, on how much um, coverage you take out. And so my excuses like, are not valid. Cause I, <laughs> as somebody yeah. who used to smoke, not now, but used to like 20 bucks would be out of my pocket every couple of days. Well, exactly. So you could, you could have a lot of assumptions around the price point. Um, mm. But the funny thing is, is that we have to insure everything. We insure our cars, we insure our homes, we insure for our stuff, but to insure us mm. as a human, it's, it, it, it's kind of a funny conversation because we're basically banking on the fact that we're going to pass away. Yeah. You don't want to admit your own mortality. I get that. <laughs> exactly. Get that. Yeah. So to have that conversation um, with somebody, I would say those are the basic assumptions that it's too expensive and it's mm. tough to get. I think I, I still remember when I got my motorcycle and I went, maybe it's time to think about disability insurance just in case <laughs> yeah. that ended up the very expensive. I went, Oh, for this is we'll just have to be a little more careful <laughs> yeah don't ride motorcycles <laughs> well i i'm uh, from what i understand as soon as you get married the motorcycle kind of gets sold so i've got uh, that that's kind of my policy on exiting motorcycles so. who see that's a, that's that's a, that's an assumption that you're making Oh, I just see too many guys <laughs> i know who used to have bikes and then they get married and then the wife and then the bike says you're getting rid of that it's, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that provide for me and our kids and whatever yeah i guess when the kids component um comes yeah in, for sure the bike might have to go <laughs> so what's the hardest part of what you do oh it's the hardest part um for sure when i get those calls um saying that something's happened to so and so mm. or um this is happening to me right now it's it's those tough conversations um, that I have to have and I have to stay strong um, for my clients because I am an emotional being and I care deeply about them. And so what affects them affects me. Yeah. And so it's when I have to deliver those checks that it's it's definitely the hardest part of my day for sure. Mm. No, I get that. Yeah. I'm I don't know if I can do that. Like, I got to take on a lot of, to be the bearer of bad news. I even have a hard enough time when it's like, you got to just tell somebody the price that they want is not feasible. You go, uh, we have done everything under the sun to get you this price from video tours to every kind of marketing we could do. Yeah. And the market is just not dictating it. And so, cause you're changing people's plans and, and how much more, like how much more how much more serious is it when it's their lives rather than their size of the home they're trying to move into like yeah that, and their sure. health so i get that yeah what's the best part of your job um i would say reaching our clients expectations and goals and seeing basically the plans to the end. It's, it's pretty cool when you start to make those plans and put those plans into place and see stuff happening. Um, because like I said, it's, it's something that we don't sell something that's tangible. 
we sell promises. And so based on that, it's pretty remarkable um, when you see that that person, they finally, you know, they've put enough savings aside and they have that money to use to purchase a mortgage and seeing those things through it's 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 pretty cool so you save saving to purchase a mortgage and and helping people see the plans through to the end can you say more about what that looks like yeah so we do a lot of retirement plans um with our clients as well and so when working with them to find out what their needs are, what their wants are, what their goals are. Um, mm. it's, it's pretty cool to hear everybody's individual story because everybody's individual story is that unique to them and it is only their story. And so when we're moving clients into the next phase and chapters of their lives, we're slowly getting to see people achieving what they want. And to do that, it's like, it's like, okay, so you get married, you have a baby, you buy a house, you get a dog. We get to see all of that unfold. Mm. And it's, it's really, really nice and very humbling when somebody calls you to say, hey, Amanda, we had a baby, you know, like wow. we need your help. We, we got it. We're, we're moving into the next phase. Like, what do we do next? And right to flush those out it's it's awesome it's it's a good time that does sound like a nice picture yeah so what do we got i got a couple of those things now still working on on some of them i'll let you know <laughs> when i got the full package yeah you gotta slowly chip away you know you gotta you gotta earn those stories it doesn't just happen in one day that's right that's for sure so what recommendations would you share with with both of our audience here on what what they would want to think about moving forward especially in a time uh, like right now, where we're really hitting reset on our lives, on our relationships, on our, well, for me, for the business plan for the year. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just been a really, there's been a lot of silver lining in, in this uh, in this pandemic, I found, for people who choose to look at it that way. So yeah. what recommendations would you share for, for uh, anyone who's maybe part of that thought is life insurance? Well, just start having these conversations, um, regardless if, you know, if it's the right time or if it's the wrong time, there's obviously a why to every single conversation that we do have. Um, so to me, just start having the, those hard conversations. If like you have any questions or anything, um, for sure, reach out you know, we're all here to help each other through these yeah. types of situations and to just start, you know, it's okay to not have that hundred dollars to start saving now. But if you have $25 or whatever that amount is, just start mm. having those conversations now, start putting those plans in place because this isn't forever. This isn't going to last. And mm. it, it might be the world is definitely going to be a different place after all of this. Um, but we still have to plan for our future and we still have to set those goals and achieve those goals. So my advice to any person out there now is to start having these conversations today and start asking those tough questions. And so if someone wants to start having that conversation with you, what's the best way to reach out to you? I would say probably email. Um, my email address is amanda.fernandez at sunlife.com or of course you can now reach me on Instagram um, and as well as Facebook. So Facebook is Amanda Fernandez um, sales associate with Sun Life Financial and then Instagram is Amanda Fernandez SLF. SLF. Mm -hmm. And Fernandez with a Z or an S? Because I know that ah, can end both ways. Good question. So it's a Z because my father's from South America. So I got the Spanish blood. If it were an oh. S, <laughs> if it were an S, it, apparently it's Portuguese. Okay. I didn't know so, that. What part yeah. of South uh, America is your family from? Uh, he's from Uruguay. Uruguay. Amazing. Yeah. yeah he's born in the capital. He's born in Montevideo. And do you still have uh, roots and ties back to there or no? I don't know. Unfortunately, no. I, I want to go. One day I will make it. 
<laughs> I promise. Fantastic. Well, I was, I'm still looking for someone to give me some Spanish pointers and lessons. So uh, well, I guess oh, that won't be you. <laughs> no, my Spanish is so terrible. No, it's, no, I don't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> okay. Okay. We'll save you that. We'll spare you from that. But I will, uh, I will also put your information, whether it's in a little subtitle or in the description, people can find you okay. there. Cool. And uh, anything that we didn't cover that you want to leave us off with? I don't think so. Um, I do want to say though, thank you so much for doing this with me. Um, I've never done anything like this. So I think this is, this could be the new norm. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was interesting. It was good. You're amazing. You're amazing. You should do this all the time. <laughs> Thanks Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Vancouver Real Estate Today explores the art of living through genuine storytelling and localized expertise. If you enjoy what we do here, do us a favor and write us a review and visit us at vancouverrealestatetoday.ca and discover the home that lets you express and live who you are.